If the product of three consecutive positive integers is 15600, and the sum of the squares of these integers, I'm going to guess this, 15600. We have to have two zeros, so we need to have something ending in zero or something ending in five. Otherwise, we won't get a zero. The product has two fives in it. We're not just one five, two five. 156 is 12 into 13. 15600 is 12 into 13 into 100. We have a hundred sitting here, so there are two zeros that need to come. So we need to have two fives and even numbers. Two fives can come. There are twenty fives sitting there because the two numbers cannot be multiples of five in three consecutive integers. I'm going to write this as twenty-five into four into twelve into thirteen. We have bingo. This is twenty-four into twenty-six into twenty-five. That is one five six zero zero. I don't want to frame the equation and solve this. We'll just factorize this and jump in. Two zeros here. The product of n into n plus one into n plus two should have a multiple of phi square, twenty phi in it. If n or n plus one or n plus two is a multiple of phi, then none of the other two can be a multiple of phi. So the entire phi square comes from one of the numbers. One of the numbers is a multiple of twenty phi. Twenty four into twenty five into twenty six works. The sum of the squares of these integers, twenty four square plus twenty phi square plus twenty six square, phi seventy six. Six twenty-five, six seventy-six, six plus six, twelve, twelve plus five, seventeen, one seven, eight plus two, ten plus seven, seventeen, seven one, six six six, eighteen, one eight seven seven. Magic square. The numbers one, two, three, four till nine are arranged in a three by three square grid in such a way that number each digit, each number occurs once, and the entries along each column, each row. And each of the two diagonals add up to the same value, and so they all add up to the same value. And so, so the the, the top left and the top right entries of the grid are six and two, respectively. Then the bottom middle entry is. And so, to start with, one to nine are all distributed. The total of all this should be nine into ten by two, which is forty-five. Each row adds up to the same number. Each each column and each row add up to the same number. Three rows make up the whole grid. So any sum, the sum has got to be fifteen. Right? Now let's put the numbers in. We know that the top left and top right entries the grid are six and two. Top left is six. Top right is two. Six plus two is eight. So this should be seven. And so these three add up to fifteen. As a simple rule of thumb, in all of these magic square questions, uh, you can take it for granted that the middle number, which is going to be part of this, 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 and this, four different sums, is going to be the middle number. From one to nine, you arrange five in the middle. The, 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 put the number bang in the middle. In the middle, seven plus five is twelve. Twelve plus three, fifteen. And then you can fill the rest out. Everything else falls in place. It probably still. One or two variants available, but the sum is 15. The key idea here: find the total sum. Therefore, you are able to find the sum of each row or each column. So each row, each column, each diagonal, all add up to 15. And so, so now you can fill the entire grid. So 6 plus 5 is 11. This will be 4. 2 plus 5 is 7. This will be 8. This automatically adds up to 15. 6 plus 8, 14. Plus 1. This is 9. Everything is 15. This is the entire grid. So we want to know. Uh, then the bottom middle entry, bottom middle entry is three. The answer should be three. When you stick in the middle number in the middle, and then this kind of question become very simple. Find the total total of everything put together. That is forty-five. So each row, each column should add up to fifteen. Then work from there on. How many different pairs a comma b of positive integers are there such that a is less than or equal to b, and one by a plus one by b is one by nine? So beautiful question. A is less than or equal to B. One by A plus one by B equals one by nine. Think about this. Simplify this. If we have two numbers adding up to one by nine, and so we cannot have either number to be. We are talking about positive integers. We cannot have either number to be greater than one by nine. Very simple idea. We know that A and B. Are both greater than nine? And very simple idea. And so one by a 
plus 1 by b is 1 by 9. We cannot have 1 by 2 plus a positive term to be 1 by 9. That's impossible. a and b, we're talking about positive integers. a and b should both be greater than 9. Right, so the simplest idea to think about is 1 by 18 plus 1 by 18. This is 1 by 9. So a and b can be 18 comma 18. That is one possibility. Half and half equal 18 comma 18. Now a is less than or equal to b. So this number 1 by a will be high. 1 by b will be lesser. a is less than or equal to b. So this works. 1 by 18 plus 1 by 18 is 1 by 9. Or a should be less than or equal to 18. b should be greater than or equal to 18. If I increase a and b, the total will become smaller. If I decrease both a and b, the total will become greater than 1 by 9. I want 1 by a plus 1 by b to be 1 by 9. That means one number equally split is 1 by 18 and 1 by 18. So we cannot have both less than 1 by 18. We cannot have both more than 1 by 18. Or this number should be that a should be less than or equal to 18. B should be greater than or equal to 9. We know a and b are both greater than 9. And that much we know. And so a should be less than or equal to 18. A should be greater than 9. Or a can take values 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 possibilities. Of this, 18 works. Fine. Now we can think of 1 by b as 1 by 9 minus 1 by a. So 1 by 9 minus 1 by any of this, wherever it will become a nice 1 by b, where b is an integer, we are through. Straight away you can sense that 17 won't work. 1 by 9 minus 1 by 17. 17 minus 9 by 17 into 9. This doesn't, it won't factorize, that's out. 1 by 18 minus 1 by 9 minus 1 by 16. Nothing in common. Be 7 by something, doesn't work. 15 could work. 1 by 9 minus 1 by 15. So the denominator could be 45, 5 by 45 minus 3 by 45, 2 by 45, funnily enough, that doesn't work. 14, not likely to work. 1 by 9 minus 1 by 14, 14 minus 9 by 14 into 9, not possible. 13, 1 by 9 minus 1 by 13, won't work. 12 might work. Let's have something in factor with 9, in common with 9. 1 by 9 minus 1 by 12. 36 is common. 4 minus 3 by 36. 1 by 36. Yep, that works. A equal to 12. B equal to 36. That is a possibility. So 12 works. 11. 1 by 9 minus 1 by 11 is 2 by 99. Doesn't work. 10. 1 by 9 minus 1 by 10 is 10 minus 1. 1 by 90. That can work. 10 works. A equal to 9 b equal to 90 works so 18 comma 18 works 12 comma 36 works 9 comma 90 works nothing else can work a cannot be 9 b being infinity that's not possible so three pairs work so wonderful question tough question a little bit of math little bit of trial and error key thing to notice here is to start with 18 comma 18 works and after that one of a and b has to be less than 18 other has to be more than 18 so A is less than or equal to 18, B is greater than or equal to 18. A cannot be less than 9. It cannot even be equal to 9. So from 10 to 18, that's a set of possible values A can take. Go step by step. We can forget about primes. We can forget about numbers that have nothing in common with 9. All those will just weed themselves out. Worry about the remaining. We are through. So sum of the squares of two numbers is 97. Then which of the following cannot be their product? A square plus B square equals 97 right. very interesting here we're talking about a b right. very interesting so think about this a square plus b square and a b that's a very powerful link if you think about two times a b a b is 64 that means 2 a b should be 128 2 a b should be minus 64 2 a b should be 32 2 a b should be 96 why am I doing this? Because I can think about a square plus b square plus 2ab, a square plus b square minus 2ab. 
my a square plus b square plus 2ab should be greater than or equal to 0 because this is a plus b whole square a square plus b square minus 2ab should be greater than or equal to 0 this is a minus b whole square 97 plus 128 works 97 minus 128 does not work it cannot be 64 the rest it can be quite simply put a square plus b square should be greater than or equal to modulus of 2ab a square plus b square should be greater than or equal to 2ab it should be greater than or equal to minus 2ab that's the condition a square plus b square by 2 is greater than or equal to a into b modulus of a into b all the time and so this idea is very important very useful so here it is summing up to 97 so 2 a b has to lie between 97 and minus 97 or a b should be less than 97 by 2 greater than minus 97 by 2 all of these work this one doesn't how many two digit numbers with a non zero digit in the units place are there which are more than thrice the number formed by interchanging the positions of its digits x y y x we told this is not zero this is definitely not zero otherwise it won't be a two digit number the two digit number x y is greater than three times the two digit number y x or 10 x plus y is greater than 3 times 10y plus x. 10x plus y is greater than 30y plus 3x. Or 7x is greater than 29y. x is greater than 29 by 7y. 29 by 7 is a little more than 4. So x is greater than 4y. So we're looking at two digits where x is greater than 4y, little more than 4y. So we'll have to be little careful with the numbers. If you put y equal to 1, x greater than 4y, x could be 5. So we could have 51. One number being 51, other number being 15. 51 is greater than 3 times 15. This work. 61, 3 times 16. This will work. 71, 81, 91. All of these will work. Let's just check 41 as well. 41 and 14. 14 into 3 is 42. This doesn't work. These five numbers work. We could put y equal to 2. 4 times y is 8. 82 and 28. 82 and 28 does not work. 28 into 3 is 84. 92 and 29. That works. With y equal to 2, there's only one possibility. 92 greater than thrice 29. Okay. Y could be 3, but Y is 3, X should be more than 4Y, that's not possible. Or there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. This is what we are looking for. 4 power N is greater than 17 power 19. I'm going to write this as 4 square power N by 2 is greater than 17 by 19. 16 power N by 2 is greater than 17 power 19. We want to find the smallest N. I'm going to think about n that doesn't work. If I put n, 16 power 19 is not greater than 17 power 19. 16 power 38 by 2 is not greater than 17 power 19. n cannot be 38. 38 does not work. n has to be greater than 38. So 33 doesn't work. 37 doesn't work. 35 doesn't work. Bam, we got this. We need to now think that 16 per 39 by 2 is greater than 17 per 19. Fine. It should be. It should be. I'm not saying it's not. This is 4 into 16 per 39 is greater than 17 per 16 per 19 is greater than 17 per 19. 4 is greater than 17 by 16 whole per 19. This could be tough to prove. It, it should be. That's what the question is telling us. But we do not have to worry about it. We know that 38 doesn't work. If the 39 and 40 had been in the choice, so then we are worried. Here. We are in trouble. It's not. So this becomes an easy question. 39 works. If n and x are positive integers such that n power n is 2 power 160. n is a positive integer. 2 power 160. 
he here we've got to write this as 2 power and number whole power and number 2 power p whole power q and so 2 power p equal to n which should be equal to q and so that's the that's the idea here p into q is 160 you write this as 2 square whole power 80 this is 4 power 80 that doesn't work i cannot write this as 2 cube whole power something i can say 2 power 4 whole power 40 2 power 4 is 16 16 power 40 that doesn't work 2 power 5 whole power 32 2 power 5 is 32 32 power 32 done so n is equal to 32 it's a roundabout way of saying n equals 32 32 n square plus 2 power n 32 square plus 2 power 32 is an integral multiple of 2 power x 32 square is 2 power 5 whole square so 2 power 10 plus 2 power 32 is 2 power x into k largest possible x think about this 2 power 10 plus 2 power 32 is 2 power x times k this is 2 power 10 into 1 plus 2 power 22 equals 2 power x into k this is an odd number so our number is 2 power 10 into an odd, odd number or the largest power of 2 that can sit here is 2 power 10 or largest possible x x max is equal to 10. Product of two positive numbers is 16 a into b sorry it's not 16 616. The ratio of the difference of their cubes to the cube of their difference a cube minus b cube by a minus b whole cube this is 157 by 3 and what is a plus b then the sum of the two numbers what is that equal to brilliant so let's say a b is 616 i'm going to write this a minus b into a square plus a b plus b square by a minus b whole cube this is 157 by 3 so one get cancelled become a minus b whole square is 157 by 3 we know a into b is 616 so we can restructure this and say a square plus a b plus b square by a square minus 2 a b plus b square is 157 by 3 or a square minus 2 a b plus b square plus 3 a b by a square minus 2ab plus b square is 157 by 3. Why have I written like this? Numerator is equal to denominator. This is 1. Or 3ab by a minus b whole square is 157 by 3 minus 1. 154 by 3. ab is 616. Let's work with that. So 3 into 616 by a minus b whole square is 154 by 3 616 154 616 by 154 is 4 or a minus b whole square is 3 into 3 into 4 a minus b this is 36 the square root of this plus or minus 6 we have assumed a to be larger therefore it is 6 we got a minus b is 6 a into b is 616 so we can solve a quadratic and get this but the numbers are all integers let's see if we can guess this 616 can be factorized so it's divisible by 4 this is 154 into 4 this is 77 into 8 a multiple of 7 so divide this by 7 11 into 56 multiply by 2 22 into 28 we've got a winner 22 into 28 is 616 28 minus 22 is 6 28 plus 22 is 50 we're dealing only with positive numbers we don't have to worry about a minus 28 into minus 22 and all of that stuff we can forget about that in a six digit number 
थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स द सिक्स डिजिट दैट इज द राइट मोस्ट डिजिट सम ऑफ द फर्स्ट थ्री डिजिट द फिफ्थ डिजिट इज सम ऑफ द फर्स्ट टू डिजिट the third digit is equal to the first digit brilliant i'm going to say this is a this is a the second digit is twice the first digit 2a and the fourth digit is the sum of the fifth and sixth digits now let's come back to this sixth digit is the sum of the first three digits sixth digit is 4a fifth digit is sum of the first two digits this is 3a the fourth digit is the sum of the fifth and sixth digits 7a then the largest possible value of the fourth digit largest possible value of the fourth digit is 7 it cannot be any more than 7 because then the, then the, the rule will work but we'll have some some uh, the, the digit cannot be more than 9 only one possible value for it 7 it is not zero so a equal to 1 gives us 7 7 is the answer number pairs how many pairs m comma n of positive integers satisfy the equation m square plus 105 is n square to start with integers and positive integers we talk about natural numbers first step we write this as 105 equals n square minus m square we know these are positive integers so n is greater than m this can be broken as n plus m into n minus m so product of two natural numbers is 105 105 can be written as 3 into 35 3 into 5 into 7 and so that's eight factors it can be broken up in four different ways so it can be written as 1 into 105 3 into 35 5 into 21 7 into 15 each of those will give us one pair of integers remember n plus m has to be greater than n minus m n and m are natural numbers n is greater than m this has to be greater than this so we need to worry about only 105 into 1 we don't have to worry about 1 into 105 Likewise, thirty-five into three, twenty-one into five, fifteen into seven. Four different combinations. Each of them will yield a pair of positive integers. So four pairs. How many factors of two power four into three power five into ten power four are perfect squares which are greater than one? First of all, I'm going to prime factorize this. Two power four into three power five into two power four into five power four. Two power eight into three power five. Into five power four. Any factor of this number is going to be of the form two power a into three power b into five power c. It cannot have any other prime divisor. It has to have contain only two, three, and five. Now further, we are told this has to be a perfect square. Or a can be zero, two, four, six, or eight. In any perfect square, the powers have to be even numbers. So a can be zero, two, four, six, or eight. It cannot be more than eight because then this won't divide this number. It has to be a factor of this. So a cannot be more than eight. What values can b take? B has to be zero, two, or four. What can c take? Zero, two, or four. Five possibilities here. Three here. Three here. Total number of possibilities: three into three into five, nine into five, forty-five. So for this number, there are four. 45 divisors that are perfect squares one of those 45 will be the number 1 which is 2 power 0 into 3 power 0 into 5 power 0 we'll have to subtract that or our answer is 44 i struggled long and hard long and hard for this question for a long time i struggled with this question it's a it's a beautiful question a square plus b square is 25 x square plus y square is 169 ax plus by is 65 What is a y minus b x? Looking at the choices, greater than five by thirteen. There's a subtraction thing here. Right? So generally, a and b are symmetric. X and y are symmetric. That means if you swap x and y values, a and b values, everything should hold good. And that's what this is telling us. Correspondingly, hold good. What that means is you cannot say it's greater than five by thirteen because there's a subtraction involved here. And so this looks dicey to me. This looks very possible. These two also look reasonable, and but we need to find some smart way of figuring this out. How do we do that? There's going to be some form of comparing a square plus b square with two ab involved. A square plus b square minus two ab. A square plus b square plus two ab. Something like that. And so, now think about this. This is phi square. 
this is 13 square this is 5 into 13 the whole square if I square this and multiply these two I should be with the same a square plus b square into x square plus y square is equal to ax plus by whole square not algebraically this is 25 this is 169 this is 65 square numerically in this particular question I'm not saying algebraically they are same in this particular question if you multiply these two you should get this square I mean, there's something special about that 65 that is 5 into 13 so if we expand this we get a square x square plus a square y square plus b square x square plus b square y square equal to a square y square plus b a square x square plus b square y square plus 2 ax by this gets knocked off with this this gets knocked off with this a square y square plus b square x square equals 2 ax by it's a wonderful expression especially if you write it like this a square y square plus b square x square minus 2 a b x y or a x b y is equal to 0 make sense of this and then we are through can you make sense of this can you think about this and make sense of this this is nothing that but a y minus b x the whole square a y minus b x the whole square is equal to 0 or a y minus b x is equal to 0 k is equal to 0 delightful question it was very 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 tough question it like lots of comfort with algebra but the key thing here you're given a 5 square and a 13 square and a 5 into 13 here therefore we might be able to do something with that and so keep that in mind be switched on about it but otherwise a very tough question i took a long time to crack this I'm totally not worth doing in the exam the way i mulled around and fooled around and got lost in algebra all that i did a square plus b square greater than or equal to 2ab x square plus y square greater than or equal to 2xy i squared this i multiplied this and this for some reason didn't go anywhere with all that then then came around to this method let m and n be natural numbers such that n is even and 0.2 less than m by 20 n by m and n by 11 less than 0.5 beautiful question i missed this when i got multiple answers and i drove myself mad for like three four minutes in the exam room. m by 20 so i'm going to take each of these 0.2 less than m by 20 less than 0 0.5 0 0.5 is half so we can just cross multiply so 0.2 into 20 is 4 4 less than m less than 10 so m can take values 5 6 m is 5 6 7 8 9 likewise 0 0.2 less than n by 11 less than 0 0.5 2.2 .2 less than n less than 5.5 n can take values 3 4 5 n is even so n can be only 4 and life is even simpler so now let's go to the third part 0 0.2 less than n by m less than 0.5 n is 4 we know that 0 0.2 less than 4 by m less than 0 0.5 4 by m 0 0.2 we can cross multiply m is less than 4 by 0 0.2 m is greater than 4 by 0 0.5 and 4 by 0 0.2 is 20 m is less than 20 m is greater than 8 You know, n is 4, m is greater than 8, so m should be 9 upwards, 20 downwards. m can take only 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or m is equal to only 9. No other value is possible. n is 4, m minus 2n, 9 minus 2 into 4, 9 minus 8, 1. I missed this, this part. And drove myself mad because I was getting multiple values for m and n. I tried with 3, 4, and 5 for n. I had to fix it and I lost time and I was getting wrong answer and was getting bugged. How many pairs of a comma b of positive integers are there such that a is less than or equal to b? a, b is 4 par 2017.
4 power 2017. You want to write it as A into P. Product of two natural numbers is some number. And how many ways can that be done? We know how that can be done. Find the number of factors divided by 2. This is 2 power 4034. Number of factors is 4035. N equal to P power A. Number of factors is A plus 1. Number of factors by 2 will give us a number of ways of writing like this. A is less than or equal to B. So, one of those ways of writing is going to be 2 power 2017 into 2 power 2017. They are both are equal. This is A, this is B. A is equal to B. So, A is less than or equal to B. Number of ways of doing this 4034 by 2 plus 1. Remove this 2017, 2 power 2017 factor. Keep it aside. Remaining divide by 2 or 2017 plus 1, 2018. You know the formula for number of factors. Number of ways of writing it as a product of two numbers. Which is writing down the answer. Nothing more here. Particularly recent this question. I got this wrong. When n equal to x plus y. 2 less than x less than 10. 14 less than y less than 23. So 15, 16, 17 all the way till 22. 3, 4, 5, 6 all the way to 9. Then how many distinct values are possible for n? Lovely. It's a very simple question. n is greater than 25. What is the maximum value n can take? 9 plus 22 is 31. n can be 31. You do 8 plus 22, it can be 30. It can be 29. Every integer less than that is possible. Right? So step by step, 31 30 is possible, 29 is possible, 28 is possible, 27 is possible, 26 is possible, 25 is possible, and so on. Wait a second, n has to be greater than 25. Leave all this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10. Yours truly is a genius in this. <laughs> and I said, I found out the number of possible ways of x plus y that are possible. x, y, and n that are possible. So for 32, it's 9 plus 22. For 30, it can be 9 plus 21 and 8 plus 22. I found all of this, added all of that, and, and, and it's 21. So I took so much time to find that yeah, and got the wrong answer. Fine. Should, lesson one is read the question clearly. The question is not saying how many possible values are there for X and Y. Think how many possible values are there for N. This is six values, 26 to 31, done. Fine. So be careful. How many of the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, 120 are divisible by none of 2, 5, 7? So we need to find set of element divisible by 2, divisible by 5, divisible by 7. Then find union of these and then subtract from 120. And so number divisible by 2 is 120 by 2, 60. By 5 is 120 by 5, 24. By 7, so it's counting everything from 7, 14, 21, all the way till uh, 7, 98, 105, 112, 119. So 17 into 7. 17 numbers. Now, we want to find A union, B union, C. We need to subtract intersection of num 2 and 5, number divisible by 10. Intersection of 2 and 7, 14. Of 5 and 7, 35. Numbers divisible by 10, divisible by 14, divisible by 35. Divisible by 10, there are 12 numbers. 14 is, you'll go from 14, 28, 42, all the way till 112. 14 into 8 is 112. So, 8 numbers. 35, 17, 105, 3 numbers. 60 plus 24 is 84. 84 plus 17 is 101. 12 plus 8 is 20. 20 plus 3 is 23. From 101, we'll subtract 23. We need to add all of these d2 intersection d5 intersection d7 number of multiples number that are multiples of 2 5 and 7 or number of device divisible by 70 it's exactly one number we subtract this and add this 101 minus 23 plus 1 101 minus 22 which is 101 Minus 22. 100, and 100 minus 20 is 80. This is 79. Totally 120 numbers are there. From this we subtract 79. We get 41 numbers that are divisible by none of 2, 5 and 7. 
the mean of all four digit even natural numbers of the form a a b b where a is greater than zero i spent a long time doing this luckily for me i did not find any of these answers in the first three iterations so therefore i got so i had to find the right answer so is an even number of the form a a b b so b has to be even so this b has to be 0 0 2 2 4 4 6 6 8 8 a need not be even a is greater than 0 1 1 0 0 2 2 0 0 3 3 0 0 all the way to 9 9 0 0 likewise 1 1 2 2 3 3 all the way to 9 9 and so on so 9 numbers here 9 here 9 here 9 here 9 here they're totally 45 numbers if we add all of this up then we should get somewhere with that how do we add all of this up so think about this 11 plus 12 plus 33 plus 44 plus 55 plus 99 9900 we can add all of those up that's common across the board so how do we do this we have 1100 plus 2200 all the way to 9900 the whole thing into 5 plus 0 into 9 22 into 9 44 into 9 66 into 9, 88 into 9. This is sum total of everything that we are looking for. We need to divide this by 45. We are through. So let's simplify this. 5 into hundreds times 11 plus 22 plus 33 all the way to 99 plus 9 times 22 plus 44 plus 66 plus 88 divided by 45. Let's take the numerator. 5 into 100 into 11 into 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus till, till 9 which is 9 into 10 by 2 plus 9 into 11 sorry, 9 into 22 into 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 divided by 45. 10 by 2 is 5, 9 into 5 is 45. This is 9 into 22 into 10. 9 into 5 is 45. So make it 2, it's 45 disappears. So we have 5 into 11, 55 into 100 plus 22 into 2, 5500 plus 44, 5544. Five, Lovely. Maybe there's a more elegant method of doing this. I don't know that. So, elegant method what might it be that's possible the average of all of this is 5500 average of all of this is 5522 44 sorry 5522 5544 5566 5588 equal weightage average of all of this is 5544 of course some beautiful elegant method average of all this average by columns get those averages average by the row get that average Midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. I first through. Beautiful method. Feeling bad that I didn't think about it. Among 100 students, X1 have birthdays in January, X2 have birthdays in February, and so on. X0 equal to maximum of X1, X2, X3 till X12. Then the smallest value possible of X0. So all 100 could have birthdays on, on January. So X0 could be 100. Technically speaking, X0 could be 90. X0 could be 50. 50 people in January, others being distributed. We want to find the smallest possible. X0 cannot be 3. Because if X0 were 3, X1 to X12, all of them being 3 also, will get a total only to 36. X0 will be lesser and the numbers are as close to each other as possible. 100 by 12 is 8 point something. So you can have a bunch of 8s. 8, 8, 8, 8. 12 8s take us to 9 to 6. We could have 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, taking us to 64, 9, 9, 9, 9. That will take us to 100. Smallest possible value of x naught is 9. Everything cannot be 8. But if you have a bunch of 8s and a few 9s, this total can be achieved. In which case, x naught will be 9. AB is 432. BC is 96. A into B is 432. B into 6 c is 96 the positive integers c less than 9 product is involved so as much as possible 
keep the numbers as low as possible or as close to each other as possible c is less than 9 c could be 8 12 into 8 works 432 is 216 into 2 2 cube into 3 cube into 2 this is 2 power 4 into 3 cube keeping it in terms of prime factorization could be easier c could be 8 b could be 12 keep it close c could be 6 b could be 16 can't 4 won't work 4 5 won't work 4 into 24 3 into 32 2 into 48 1 into 96 i think is outlandish even this we don't need to worry about it's one of these four and whichever one works so if b were let's say b is 12 b is 16 b is 24 b is 32 b cannot even be 32 that is 2 power 5 only 2 power 4 into 3 cube a what should a be b is 2 square into 3 a should be 2 square into 3 square remaining 36 b is 16 a is 27 b is 24 2 cube into 3 2 into 3 square a should be 18 lovely so we have a b c a could be 36 b could be 12 c could be 8 this looks nice or a is 27 b is 16 c is 6 b is 24 a is 18 c is B being sorry, A is 18, B is 24, C is 4. One of these is the answer. This is minus 9 plus 4 minus 2. So this is better. I'm just comparing. Minus 9 plus 8 minus 2. This will be better. 27 plus 16 plus 16 plus 6 is 22. 22 plus 27 is 49. 28 plus 18 is 46. 46 is better. How many three-digit numbers are there for which the product of their digits is more than 2 but less than 7? More than 2 could be 3, 4, 5, 6. Product is 3. 1 into 3 is 3. So it has to be 1, 1, 3. So 1, 1, 3 could be 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 1. 3 can be written as only 1 into 3. Straight away we can do this. 1, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 1. If you are prime numbers, they can only be written as 1 into themselves. Of course, 4 and 6 can be written in other ways, but let's start with this. 114, 141, 411, 116, 161, 611. So far, so good. 4 can also be written as 2 into 2. So put two twos and a 1. Here, 1, 2, 2 and 3 variants happen. 3 more here. 6 can be written as 2 into 3, apart from 1 into 6, of course. So this is 1 into 2 into 3 this will have 6 variants so for prime numbers we don't need to worry only 3 variants for composite numbers those 3 variants will exist and then we need to look beyond and so so in how many 3 digit numbers are there there will be 3 here 3 3 3 12 plus 3 15 plus 6 21 21 three digit numbers there for whom product of the digits will be more than 2 but less than 7. Let's solve this one. Wonderful question. Really tough. But there's a very simple juicy way of doing this. I'm going to do it with the juiciest method possible. I'll give you the starting step for doing the more rigorous method but not going to get into that. Right. X and Y are positive real numbers satisfying X plus Y is 102. Then the minimum possible value of 2601 into 1 plus 1 by X into 1 plus 1 by y. We're talking about positive real numbers and the best way to go about it is pick two extremes. Put x is 0.1, y is 101.9 or x is 1, y is 101. The other extreme put x is 51, y is 51. They're true. Let's do that. Let's put x is 1, y is 101. We worry only about this. 1 plus 1 by 1 into 1 plus 1 by 101 this is one possibility or we're talking about 1 plus 1 by 51 into 1 plus 1 by 51 
this is barely more than one but this is two this two into one point something both of these are barely more than one and so this is going to be way greater than this or we want to find the minimum possible value the way to go about it Planck x as 51 y as 51 both equal we are good to go what do we do that let's look at that put x as 51 so looking at 2601 into 1 plus 1 by 51 or 52 by 51 into 52 by 51 1 plus 1 by 51 is 52 by 51 51 into 51 funnily enough is 2601 52 into 52 you should find that but I happen to know that it is 2704 so the, the 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 textbook way of doing this trying to establish trying to find the maximum way of this maximum range for this all of that is, is tricky but the the quick, quick and dirty way we're told that both are positive real numbers stick both of them as equal stick both of them far apart and then see where you land up both of them far apart takes us to a larger number equal takes us to a very small number go for the small number you're good to go the other way of doing this x plus y is 102 i'm going to anchor around the midpoint so i'm going to say x is 51 plus k y is 51 minus k so we have incorporated that constraint with a single variable so you can say 2601 into 1 plus 1 by 51 plus k into 1 plus 1 by 51 minus k and simplify you'll get an expression in terms of k you have a look at it you'll be able to find where it goes to maximum where it goes to minimum and then you're good to go the, the textbook method works like this you won't have to differentiate or anything you can still find the answer it's not rocket science that method also takes you to the answer reasonably quickly but this is far better plonk in one extreme plonk in the other extreme you're good to go this is a very interesting question let's try this one how many four digit numbers each greater than 1000 and each having all four digits distinct are there with seven coming before three and so four digit numbers each greater than 1000 effectively all four digit numbers and so 1000 does not come in our list anyway because we're talking about seven and three and all four digits should be distinct there are two points here one is we need to worry about all four being distinct then we need to worry about a zero being there because if selecting zero as one of the digits we have to worry about the fact that zero could be the leading digit i want to break this down seven coming before three there's definitely seven and three sitting inside so let's put seven and three somewhere seven and three can go into any one of any two of these four slots but any two slots you select there's only one order they can go in because seven has to come before three and or putting seven and three here can be done in four c two ways and so 7 and 3, 7 and 3, 7 and 3, whatever. 4, C2 is 6. 6 ways done. We have a 7 sitting here and a 3 sitting here. Now let's dive deep. Let's say 7 and 3 are in. Now we need to worry about the remaining two digits. Those two should be different from 7 and 3. We have 10 digits of which two are gone. Out of the 8, we need to select some two digits. That is 8, C2. Not just that, we've selected two digits. Maybe we selected five and nine. It could be five nine or nine five. It could be five and nine or nine and five. Eight C two into two. Lovely. Four C two into eight C two into two. Now we've accounted for all numbers having seven and three, seven coming before three, all four digits being distinct. And what are we missing here? We are missing or we are additionally counting numbers like 0, 7, 5, 3. This will get counted, mind you. But this should not get counted. Why should it not get counted? Because this number is not more than 1000. This is not a four digit number. So from this list, we subtract this. What are these numbers? These are numbers where first digit is 0. And then there is a 7 and 3 sitting inside. And 7 and 3 are in, 7 is ahead of 3. And then there is one more digit. So 7 ahead of 3, 7, 3, 7, 3, 7, 3. Three different positions, 3C2. And in two, we have seven remaining digits. All four digits are distinct, mind you. So 0, 3, 7 going away. There are seven remaining digits. Any one of those could have been there. So 3 into 7. Or from this number, subtract this number and we are through. 4C2 is 6. 8C2 is 8 into 7 by 2. 28 into 2 minus 3 into 7. 
6 into 12, 12 into 28, maybe we can carve out a 7. So 12 into 4 into 7 minus 3 into 7. So we can take out a 7, we can take out a 3 also. So we can take out entire 21 here. 7 into 3 goes away. 16 minus 1, 21 into 15, whatever that number turns out to be. 15 ones are 15, 5, 1, 30, 31, 315. So there's truly 315 numbers possible that satisfy all of these conditions. How many three digit numbers are greater than 100? All three digit numbers are 100 or more. So only 100 is ambiguity and increased by 198 when the three digits are arranged in reverse order. So we have ABC and CBA. We subtract this, we subtract 100C plus 10B plus A minus 100A plus 10B plus C. We get 99C minus 99A is 198 or C minus A is 2. We have a three digit number where the units place is 2 more than the hundreds place. So we flip it. This will become 2 more than that. The difference becomes 198. And so R, we are looking at a number like some 1-3, 2-4, 3-5, 4-6, 5-7, 6-8, 7-9, one of these numbers. Any one of these will work. How many numbers are from 1-3? Could be 103, 113, 123, 133, etc. 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 10 possible numbers. With the middle digit, there's no constraint on B. B can take all values from 0 to 9. So 10 numbers here, 10 numbers here, 10 here, 10, 10, 10, 10. 70 different numbers are possible. The natural numbers are divided into groups 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. And the sum of the numbers in the 15th group is equal to, very interesting. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. The first group has one element, second group has three elements, third group has five elements, and so on. The third, first group ends with one, second group ends with two square. Third group ends with 3 square, fourth group ends with 4 square, and so on. Or 15th group should end with 15 square. And we want to find sum of all elements. 15th group, how many elements will it have? The third group has 5 elements, first group has 1 element. Second group has three elements, two and minus one. Fifteenth group would have 29 elements. Fifteen into two, minus one. The other way of thinking about it, if I can imagine the fourteenth group. The fourteenth group will end with 14 square. So this ends with 196. This ends with 225. I'm adding all numbers from 197 to 225. So 25 plus 4, 29 numbers are there, going from 197 to 225. This is a simple sequence of numbers. I can add all numbers till 225, all natural numbers till 225, subtract all numbers till 196, any 10 plus 1 by 2, any 10 plus 1 by 2. Or I can say I'm doing 29 by 2 into 197 plus 225. I'm putting them in pairs, there are 14 and a half pairs. 29 by 2 into 197 plus 225, whatever that turns out to be. 29 by 2, 197 plus 225, 2, 10 plus 2, 12, 2, 1, 2 plus 2, 4, 4, 22, or 211 into 29 should end in 9. This is the answer. 6, 1, 1, 9, it should work. For a four digit number, the sum of its digits in the thousandth, hundredth, and tenths place is 14. These three add up to 14. The sum of its digits in the hundredths, tenths, and units place is 15. These three add up to 15. Nice and simple. That means this digit is one more than this digit. These two are common. These three add up to 15, 14, these three add up to 15. Or this is A. This is a plus one. Nice. And the tens place is four more than the units place digit. This is four more than this. 
it should be a plus 5. Nice. Then the highest possible four digit number satisfying the above conditions. Highest possible four digit number. These three should add up to 14. It should be as high as possible. This is a plus 5. This is a. We cannot have a digit more than 9. We plot this as 9. I mean, this will be 4. This will be 5. 4 dash 9 5. 4 plus 9 is 13. Put this as 1. 4 plus 1 plus 9 is 14. Some of the three digits is 14. 1 plus 9 plus 5 is 15. That works. This is 4 more than this. This works. It cannot be more than 9. That means this cannot be more than 4. 4, 1, 9, 5 is the best possible number. The number of distinct pairs of integers m, n satisfying this inequality. Wonderful, wonderful question. I really struggled with this one. First thing to know is mod a less than mod b is same as saying a square less than b square. One implies the other. That's the first step to do. That means we can say 1 plus m n the whole square is less than m plus n the whole square or 1 square plus m square n square plus 2mn is less than m square plus n square plus 2mn. Nice. So far so good. Now this 2mn gets knocked off on both sides. 1 plus m square n square minus m square minus n square is less than 0 or 1 minus n square minus m square plus m square n square is less than 0. 1 minus n square minus m square times 1 minus n square is less than 0 or quite beautifully 1 minus m square into 1 minus n square is less than 0. Nice. We're looking at distinct pair of integers product of two numbers is less than zero either this is negative this is positive or the other way around right so either this is negative and this is positive or this is positive and this is negative the beauty of this is this is one minus m square is negative that is reasonable lots of numbers one minus n square is positive one square is one n can't be one it will become 0. 2, 3, 4, 5, it won't work. Only possibility where 1 minus n square is positive is when n equal to 0. Only positive possibility where 1 minus m square is negative is when m is 0. So m equal to 0, n greater than 1 works. If m or n were 1, this won't work, it will become 0. If m is 0, n greater than 1 works. Or n equals 0, m greater than 1 works. Nothing else is possible. If m and n are both more than 1, both will become negative, product will become positive. If either of them is 1, product will go to 0. That doesn't work. So one of them should be 0, other one should be greater than 1. So m0, n greater than 1, or n0, m greater than 1. That's the possibility. Now let's come back to this, this question. It's not n greater than 1. This is mod n greater than 1 mod m greater than 1 because we're talking about n square square so plus 1 work then minus 1 work plus 2 work then minus 2 will work plus and minus 1 will not work plus 2 and minus 2 will work modulus of m plus n less than 5 this is an interesting thing so let's attack that modulus of m plus n less than 5 if m is 0 mod n less than 5 when m is 0 mod n less than 5 n has to be greater than 1 be 2 3 4 n could be plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 plus or minus 4 exact opposite if you put n equal to 0 we have mod m less than 5 we know mod m has to be more than 1 m could be plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 plus or minus 4 so 0 comma 2 0 comma minus 2 0 comma 3 0 comma minus 3 0 comma 4 0 comma minus 4 6 possibilities plus 6 12 possibilities super tough question really 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 tough question so it's kind of question which says okay i'm not touching this we square this then we get somewhere and still there's a couple of steps to go a four digit number is formed by using only the digits 1 2 and 3 such that both 2 and 3 appear at least once 
It's four digit number. Two and three sit here at least once. I'm going to do this in two steps. I'm going to think about what the digits are and then think about what combinations can come. So what the digits are and what combinations can come. What I mean by that? So I'm going to put digits in and then think about in how many ways the digits can be rearranged. So suppose I say two, three, two, one. Then I won't write two, three, one, two. Both are same. I'll think about two, three, two, one, and then think about in how many ways we can rearrange that. Right? So two of the digits are two and three. So we're worried about only the remaining. Right? So these could come from one, two, and three. So these digits, this combo. I'm worried only about this. Right? So what could it be? They could have the same digit, or it could be one, one. 2, 2, 3, 3. That is possible. Or there could be different digits. In which case it could be 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. Right? I'm not thinking the three options for this, three options for this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So nine combinations totally. That's the math around it. If we do that, then 1, 2 will get counted, 2, 1 will also get counted. I don't want to. These are all different selections for the last two digits and so so if i don't want to count one two and two one i don't want to count one three and three one so what are the possible digits the digits could be two three one one two three two 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 three 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 two three one two two three one three two three two three number of numbers possible this is four factorial by two factorial 12 this is four factorial by three factorial four 4 factorial by 3 factorial, 4, 4 factorial by 2 factorial, 12, 4 factorial by 2 factorial, 12, 4 factorial by 2 factorial into 2 factorial, 2, 2 factorial in the denominator, 6, add all of this up, that should be our answer, 12 plus 12 plus 12 is 36, 40, 44, 50, 50 totally, yeah. Beautiful question, but really tricky. You have to be very careful about what you are counting. Answer is 15. A square plus AB plus A is 14. B square plus AB plus B is 15. These questions are painful. The only thing that gives me my sanity here is A and B being natural numbers. That's very nice. Beautiful to get. What do we do? We add both of these. Get a square plus 2ab plus b square plus a plus b is 42 or a plus b whole square plus a plus b is 42 a plus b into a plus b plus 1 is 42 you put a plus b as x, x into x plus 1 is 42 or consecutive natural number 6 into 7 is 42 a plus b is 6 This cannot be 3 and 3 because then these two will give us the same answer. A appears to be smaller. This is A square and A, this is B square and B. It becomes double. So A appears to be smaller. So I'll put A as 2. Put A as 2, B as 4. 2 square plus 2 into 4 plus 2. 4 plus 8 plus 2. 14. Yep, that works. A is 2, B is 4. That should work. So what is 2a plus b2 into 2, 4 plus 4, 8, done. If we add these two, we get a plus b, a plus b is 6. 3 comma 3 doesn't work. 2 comma 4 should work. And then we are through. We can solve this. We can say a is 6 minus b. Substitute that here. Get that quadratic solve and get a. That's the other more algebraic method. We can snap out of it and simplify. The average of three integers is 13. When a natural number n is included, the average of these four integers remains an odd integer. Nice. Three integers is 13. Let's say i1, i2, i3. Average is 13. A fourth number comes, i4. Average remains an integer. If fourth number were 13, average would be 13. Fourth number is more than 13, average will increase. Fourth number is less than 13, average will decrease. It remains an integer. So excess brought in by the fourth number should be equally distributable across these fellows. That means whatever I bring more from I4, 
I can distribute across all four. If it has to remain an integer, I can add 1, 1, 1, 1, or i4 could have brought 4 more than 13. If i4 brings 13, overall average is 0. Sorry, overall average is unchanged, 13. If i4 brings 17, it will become 14. If it becomes 21, it will become 15. 4 more, average will go up by 1. Another 4 more, average will go up by 1 more. The average of these four integers remains an odd integer. So it's not just four more, I should bring eight more. 21, 29, 37. All of these, the average will go from 13, 15, 17. Right? The minimum possible value of n is 21, we'll take it to 15. The question says that it remains an odd integer, but hey, it's not saying the integer of the average has increased, but brought lesser also. But nine, oops. If i4 brings 9, average will become 12. If i4 become, brings in 5, average will become 11. If it brings in 1, average will become 10. You cannot bring in less than 1. Because the average of 3 integers, natural number. The fourth one is i4. Fourth integer is a natural number. You cannot bring less than this. It's an odd integer. So, hey, I should not include these numbers. So, you can bring in 5 and the average could go to 11. The minimum possible value of n or i4 is 5. They're effectively saying 39 plus n by 4 is equal to an integer. It's an odd integer. 39 plus 1 by 4 is 10. Doesn't work. 39 plus 5 by 4 is 11. That works. We are through. For natural numbers x, y, and z, if x, y plus y, z is 19 and y, z plus z, x is 51, y into x plus z. 19 and z into x plus y is 51. We told very clearly that x, y and z are natural numbers. 19 can only be broken as 1 into 19 or 19 into 1. It cannot be 19 into 1. x plus z cannot be 1. x plus z is 19. y is 1. Plug that in here. So z into x plus 1 is 51. This is not 51 into 1, x cannot be 0, not 1 into 51, x is not 50, that we know, 3 into 17, 17 into 3, x plus z is 19, so x, z into x plus 1, so this could be 17 into 2 plus 1, 17 plus 2 is 19, that works, we put z as 3, x equal to 16. Then x plus z is 19, 3 into 17 also works. So we could have a scenario where y is 1, x is 2, z is 17, or y is 1, x is 16, z is 3. So this is 17 into 3 or 3 into 17. Both ways it works. So it adds, it could be x, z is 17, x is 2 could work or x is 16, z is 3 could work. Minimum possible value of x, y, z, multiply this is 48, this is 34. Product is lower in this case, which is 34. Lovely, done, true. Let a be the largest positive integer that divides all numbers in the form 3 power k plus 4 power k plus 5 power k. b be the largest positive integer that divides all numbers in the form 4 power k plus 3 times 4 power k plus 4 power k plus 2, where k is any positive integer, then a plus b. What do we do? We say we put k equal to 1 and we find 3 power k plus 4 power k plus 5 power k. So 3 plus 4 plus 5, 12. k equal to 2, 9, 16, 25. k equal to 3, 27 plus 64 plus 125. This is 12, 9 plus 16 is 25, 25 plus 25 is 50. 9, 16, 6, 1, 3 plus 6, 9 plus 2, 11, 1, 2, 16. We can keep on going. So the A should be less than or equal to 12. This number is only 12. 12 does not divide this. 12 does not divide. Even 6 does not divide. This does not have a 3. It does not have a 4 either. Between these two, the highest common factor is 2. So 2 can divide 
all of these numbers yes this is odd this is odd add up is odd odd add plus odd is odd plus odd is even even plus even is even this is an even number so a can be 2 that part is done straight away then so a anything more than 2 is not possible 4 is not possible not a multiple of 4 6 is not possible not a multiple of 6 out anything else doesn't divide this so beautiful so a is 2 Second one is more interesting because it was 4 par k, 4 par k and it's also 4 par k into something. So we can extract a 4 par k out, we call it 4 par k, 3 into 4, car, 4 par k plus 16 into 4 par k. Now this is 4 par k into 1 plus 3 plus 16 into 20. Where k is any positive integer, k could be 1, 2, 3, so if we put k as 1, this number is 80, k is 2, this is 320, so this one, the number, any number, k is 3, it will be 320 into 4, k is 4, it will be 320 into 4 into 4. So always it's a multiple of 80, the largest positive integer that divides this. For any k is 80, this number is always a multiple of 80, it is 4 power k into 20, k is at least 1, this gives us a 20, this, this gives us a 4. So the smallest number, the largest number that will divide this always is 80. k is 1, it is 80, anything more will be more than 80. And so, so 80 is definitely in the number. a is 2, b is 80, add these two, we get a plus b to be 82. For some natural number n, assume that 15,000 factorial is divisible by n factorial factorial largest possible value of n is and so 15,000 factorial is it divisible by 5 factorial factorial 5 factorial is 120 divided by 120 factorial this works 5 works put a 6 factorial that means 120 into 6 720 factorial this is 15,000 factorial 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 all the way till 15,000 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 are 720 6 is also possible. Put 7 factorial, 720 into 7, 0, 4, 1, 5, 0, 4, 0. Yep, that also sits within this. 7 should be possible. Put 8 factorial, 5, 0, 4, 0 into 8, 0, 32, 40,320. 8 factorial factorial will become bigger than 15,000 factorial. So 8 is not possible. 7 is possible. It seems like a very intimidating question. I got I got shocked when I read this question. N factorial, factorial. That we are dealing with very large numbers. We have to figure out something. He's basically saying find the smallest n such that n factorial factorial is greater than 15,000. Our answer is one less than that. 8 factorial factorial is more than 15,000. 7 factorial factorial is less than 15,000. Sorry. 7 factorial is less than 15,000. 8 factorial is more than 15. Though. That's all we need to find out. We are through. And so, once we decide to say, okay, let me poke this, I'm not going to get intimidated by this, then this becomes a very easy question. A school has 5,000 students, and if the students are divided equally into teams of 9, 10, 12, or 25 each, exactly 4 are always left out. LCM of 9, 10, 12, 25, plus 4. That should be the term. 9 has 2 3s in it, 3 square into 2 into 5 from 10, so 2 square that has to come because of 12 and a 5 square that has to come because of this. 3 square into 2 square into 5 square is the LCM of all of those, which is 3 into 2 into 5 the whole square, 900. So plus 4, so 904, 1804, 2704, 3604, 4504, some, some, some number like this. However, if they are divided into teams of 11 each, no one is left out. And so, so the number should be a multiple of 11. 8 plus 4, 12 minus 1, 11. This works. 7 plus 4, 11 minus 2. This doesn't work. 6 plus 4, 10 minus 3. This doesn't work. 9, 9 minus 4. This doesn't work. Only this works. Just 1804 is a multiple of 11. 1804 will be 174 or something like that or 164 something like that. Of course, one time 
or the yeah, 164, something like that. The maximum number of schools of 12 each that can be formed out of the students in the school is 1804 by 12. 4 will be remaining. 1800 by 12. 180 by 12 is 15, 150. Let n be the least positive integer such that 168 is a factor of 1134 power n. If m is the least positive integer such that 1134 power n is a factor of 168 power n, then m plus n equals n. At first cut, this looks like a tough question. It is not. Prime factor is 168. I know it's 24 into 7. Number of hours in a week, which is 2 into 3 cube into 7. 1134 is 2 into 567 which is a multiple of 9 2 into 9 into 63 which is 2 into 9 into 9 3 power 4 into 7 I've written as 2 into 3 cube into 7 which is incorrect I'm sure you guys have spawned already it's 2 cube into 3 into 7 nice 1134 power n, 168 should be a factor of that. 168 should be contained within this. There are lots of 3s, lots of 7s. Even 1134 power 1 will contain 3s and 7s that is sitting here. 2 cube, I need to have 3 2s in this number. This number is only 1, 2. So I have to cube this. So 1134 cube is absolutely necessary. Only then we will be able to get a 2 cube, which is important. We will have lots of 3s, lots of 7s. It's not this many threes and sevens are not required, but we need two cube or n is equal to three. M is the least positive integer such that one one three four power n is a factor of one sixty eight power m. Nice. This is a factor of one sixty eight power m. So two cube into three power twelve into seven cube should sit inside. 2 cube into 3 into 7 whole power m. We put if m equal to 4, 2 power m equal to 1, 2 cube will be contained. 7 put m equal to 3, 7 cube will be contained, but we need 3 power 12, which is like a big number. m has to be at least 12. Minimum value of n, n minimum is 3, m minimum is 12. The minimum value m plus n is 15. Nice question. Once you prime factorization, just look at the numbers, look at the prime factorization, get through. Let a, b, and m be m and n be natural numbers such that a greater than 1, b greater than 1. If a power m plus into b power n is 144 power 145, the largest possible value of n minus m. Very, very interesting. So a power m into b power n is 2 power 4 into 3 square whole power 145 or it is 2 power 580 into 3 power 290. First cut I thought hey a should be 2 b should be 3 or b should be 2 a should be 3 and so that is a nice and simple question largest possible value of n minus m have n as high as possible m as low as possible we yeah, are through. So I can say this is equal to a could be 3, 3 power 290 and 2 power 580. This is work. n is 580, m is 290, n minus m is 580 minus 290, 290. We are going to pause a second. And so we have not been told that a and b are prime. So this number 2 power 580 can be written as 4 power 290. This can be written as 9 power 145. This can be written as 8 power 145. This can be written as 145, 9 power 5, whole power 29. So many different combinations are there. A and B need not be 2 and 3 or 3 and 2. Doesn't work like that. Now let's see. We want N to be as high as possible. So it really helps if we put B as 2. That is the maximum value we can go to. N max is 580. Let's plonk N as high. Put it in there. M should be minimum. So I can say, I can think of it as 9 power 145, m could be 145 or 9 power 5 whole power 29, n could be 29 or quite interestingly, 
I can think of it as 3 power 290 whole power 1 or m minimum is equal to 1. n max is 580, m minimum is 1. This could go as high as 579. Beautiful question. We basically take the lesser of the two primes, stick it under b, maximize n, larger of the two prime, but don't really chase the prime. Planck a as the entire 3 power 290, m will be 1. So 579 is the answer. For any natural numbers m, n and k such that k divides both m plus 2n and 3m plus 4n, k must be a common divisor of. A very nice question, fine. I really like this one. So this number k divides m plus 2n and 3m plus 4n. Very interesting. Because if a number k divides a and b, then it will divide a plus b it will divide a minus b. This means k can be written as pa, k can be written as qb, qb, sorry, a is pk, b is qk, you add these two, it will be p plus q times k, it will be p minus q times k, it works, a plus 2b, a plus 3b, all of that we can figure out. And the k divides this, k divides this. So what can we say? We can subtract one from the other and then we subtract that. 2m plus 2n, k divides 2m plus 2n, which is nice, which is interesting, but all our choices are not 2m plus 2n, they are m separately, n separately. So what do we do? We say, hey, nice, k divides m plus 2n, k divides 3m plus 4n, and k divides m plus 2n, k is a factor of m plus 2n, that means k will be a factor of 2m plus 4n. K is a factor of this and this, K will be a factor of M. I subtract this from this. K is a factor of 24, K is a factor of 18, K will be a factor of 24 minus 18. K will be a factor of 24 plus 18. So what are we doing? We are effectively saying let me eliminate one variable, see what is remaining. So K is definitely a factor of M. What do we do next? K divides M plus 2N and 3M plus 4N. So K will divide. 3m plus 4n, k will divide 3m plus 6n, multiplying this by 3, subtract 1 from the other, k will divide 2n. k is a factor of m, k is a factor of 2n. We will look at the choices, if it says m and 2n, both are present. Yeah, it divides m, it divides 2n, we are done. The key idea we are using here, if k is a factor of a, k is a factor of b, k is a factor of any multiple of a, any multiple of b, k is a factor of sum of a plus b sum of a minus b, k is a factor of a and b, k is a factor of p a plus q b, where p and q are natural numbers or integers, it could be phi a minus 4 b, it will be a factor of that. Right? Nice, we are using that idea and then arriving at this. Number of positive integers less than 50 having exactly two distinct factors other than one and itself, other than one and itself, two distinct factors or four factors totally or number n should be of the form p into q or should be of the form p q. p into q where p and q are distinct primes, distinct primes, the factors are 1, p, q, p, q. This is 1, this is n, two other factors. Number of the form p cube, 1, p, p square, p q. This is 1, this is a number itself. Other than 1 and itself, two other factors, four factors totally. Other than 1 and itself, two factors. So what are the numbers we are looking for? P and Q should be distinct. Something about 2 into 3, 2 into 5, 2 into 7, 2 into 11, 2 into 13, 2 into 17, 2 into 19, 2 into 23, 2 to 29 will go beyond. All of these are possible. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. Then what do we do? We say 3 into 5. 3 into 7, 3 into 11, 3 into 13, another 4 numbers here, 8 numbers here. 3 into 17 is 51, I don't have to worry about it. After this we have 5, 5 into 7, 35 and 5 into 11 will become more, one number here. I don't have to worry about 7 into 11, so that's way above 50. So 6, 10, 14, 22, all of these numbers, 8 of them, plus 4, 12 plus 113, 
I almost marked down 13 because I had completely forgotten this. P cube could be 2 cube, could be 3 cube, this is 8, this is 27, 5 cube is 125, I don't have to worry about it. So these 13 numbers plus those two numbers, 15 numbers totally will have a total of 4 factors or 2 factors apart from, 2 distinct factors apart from 1 in itself. Totally 15 numbers. Let n and m be two positive integers such that are exactly 41 integers greater than 8 power m and less than 8 power n, right? which can be expressed as powers of 2. Okay, nice. So, 8 power m greater than x power m, 8 power m and less than 8 power n. So, 41 integers that can be expressed as powers of 2. Fine. So, so, this is 2 power something, 41 different values. Nice. Then the smallest possible value of n plus m is nice. So 8 power m and 8 power 8 power m 8 power n in between these two bunch of powers of 2 are sitting there. Right? First of all, this is 2 power 3 m less than 2 power something less than 2 power 3 n. So between 3 m and 3 n between say 9 and 36. And some two values. Fine. So, 3m and 3n. How many different values can there be? So, let's say we are looking at numbers from say 2, 2 power 9, less than 2 power something, less than 2 power 21. How many values can n take? 10, 11, 12, 3, 21. 21 minus 9, 21 minus 9 is 12. So there can be 12 different values, there can be 11 different values. Nice. So, it's a very important adjustment because otherwise this 41 won't come. When I did this question, I did 3n minus 3m and said 3 times n minus m, how is it going to be 41? It's not 3 times n minus m, it is 3n minus 3m minus 1 because it is in between, it is greater than this and less than that. So now, we get quite beautifully 3n minus 3m minus 1 equals 41 or 3 times n minus m is 42 n minus m is 14. What are the smallest values of m plus n? n minus m is 14. Uh, all we need to m and 2 be two positive integers. So, m could be 1. m is 1 in which case n is 15. 1 plus 15, 16. Done. Once we find the difference, plugging it in is far simpler. Two simple question. There are the first two natural numbers, each having 15 factors, including 1 and the number itself. 15 factors, the number of the form p power a into q power b has a plus 1 into b plus 1 factors. 15 can be written as 3 into 5 or just 15 alone. So, we are looking for a number of the form p power 4 into q square or number of the form p power 14. First two natural numbers each having 15 factors including one on the number itself which is nice. So, p power 4 into q square the smallest number is 2 power 4 into 3 square. This is 2 power 14 which is huge, small and so the smallest number. The next smallest number is either 3 power 4 into 2 square or 2 power 4 into 5 square. This is the smallest. Both these are smaller than this. This is out. So, smallest number is 2 power 4 into 3 square, 16 into 9, 144. This 3 power 4 into 2 square is 81 into 4, 324. 2 power 4 into 5 square, 2 square into 5 square is 100. Another 2 square, this is 400. This is 20 square, 400. This is too great. So, 144 and 324 are the first two numbers. So, we have to find the sum of the two numbers. Oopsie. 144 plus 324, which is 468. That's the number we are looking for. 468 should be among the choices. Oh, this is theta. Let n be any natural number such that 5 power n minus 1 is less than 3 power n plus 1. Then the least integer value that satisfies 3 power n plus 1 less than 2 power n plus m for each n. And so, so it's one of those beautiful questions. I got caught out by this. Beautiful because it looks severely algebraic. There's an n and an m and then there are powers and all that. 5 power n minus 1 less than 3 power n plus 1. And so, that's not algebraic at all. It's just numbers. Nothing more than that. What I'm going to do, let me say n equal to 1. I'm going to think about 5 power n minus 1. 
I'm going to think about 3 power n plus 1. Right, so 5 power 0 is 1, 3 square is 9. I'm going to write powers of 5, 1, 5, 25, 125, 625 and so on. 9, 27, 81, 243, 729 and so on. 5 power n minus 1, 3 power n plus 1. Each term is the previous number into 5. Each one is previous number into 3. This starts off bigger than this. Somewhere this fellow is going to catch up. I'm multiplying by 5. I get bigger and bigger and bigger. Sooner than if this is multiplied by 3. This question hinges on where does this sequence overtake this sequence. That's it. That's a starting point. We grab onto that. We get through that much quicker. I put n equal to 1. Didn't work. This is lesser. Lesser, 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 lesser. But the moment we come here, you can even sense it is going to work. 625, 729 is very close. I multiply this by 3. I don't even have to find the number. It is some 2187. I don't care. This is greater than this. n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From 6 onwards, 5 power n minus 1 is greater than 3 power n plus 1. And so, so till 5, this holds good. 5 power n minus 1 less than 3 power n plus 1. n could be 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. One of these. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all works. From 6 onwards, 5 power 4 is greater than 3 power 6. This fellow overtakes. We know that 5 power n minus 1 is less than 3 power n plus 1. n is 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. Now come to the second part. The least integer of m that satisfies 3 power n plus 1 less than 2 power n plus m. And nice. So, n could be 1, 3 square less than 2 power m plus 1. n could be 2, 3 cube less than 2 power m plus 2. We want to find the least integer value of m. That satisfies this. We have to find the least value of m here, 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 all the way till n equal to 6. 3 power 6 less than 2 power m plus 6. Okay. 3 square 9, 9 less than 2 power m plus 1, 9 less than 16. For this case, m is 3, 2 power 4. 3 cube is 27, this should be 32 m plus 2 is 32, m plus 2 is 5, m is 3. Straight away I sense that, look, I don't need to do every number. I will go here. And 3 power 6 is 3 square whole cube, 9 cube, 7, 29, less than 2 power 10. m plus 6 is 10, m is equal to 4. Somewhere it goes from 3 to 4, it is 3 or 4. I can I can kind of figure that out. I can guesstimate that because I'm going to have 3 power 4 less than 2 power m plus 2, 81. The next number is 128. 128 is sorry 3 power m plus 3. 128 is 2 power 7. M is 4. Right. So 3 power 6 is 729 less than 2 power 10. This is m plus sorry n plus m, m is 5, it should be m plus 5, it's not 4, m is 5. Sorry about that. So the value of m that satisfies us for all such n is the smallest possible value for everything should be at least 5. The answer, the least value m can take is 5. It's a beautiful question because there is practically nothing that we solve algebraically in this question. We're not solving a quadratic, we're not solving a cubic, we're not solving some exponents and logarithm, fancy stuff, nothing. We basically look at this question and go, let me substitute lots of values, see where this falls in place. And beautiful question because of that. In how many ways can eight identical pens be distributed among Amal, Bimal and Kamal such that Amal gets at least one, Bimal gets at least two, and Kamal gets at least three pens. Amal, one plus something. Bimal, two plus something. 
கமல் த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் சம்திங் லெட் சே ஒன் ப்ளஸ் எக்ஸ் டூ ப்ளஸ் ஒய் த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் ஸோ ஒன் ப்ளஸ் எக்ஸ் ப்ளஸ் டூ ப்ளஸ் ஒய் ப்ளஸ் த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் ஈக்வல்ஸ் எயிட் ஆர் எக்ஸ் ப்ளஸ் ஒய் ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் இஸ் எயிட் மைனஸ் சிக்ஸ் விச் இஸ் டூ அண்ட் எக்ஸ் ஒய் அண்ட் ஜெட் ஹேவ் டு பி ஹோல் நம்பர்ஸ் ஆர் வி கேன் ரைட் திஸ் எஸ் எக்ஸ் ப்ளஸ் ஒன் ப்ளஸ் ஒய் ப்ளஸ் டூ ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் விச் கேஸ் வாட் எக்ஸ் ப்ளஸ் ஒய் ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் ஈக்குவல் டு எயிட் மைனஸ் த்ரீ விச் இஸ் ஃபைவ் ஹியர் வி ஆர் சால்விங் ஃபார் எக்ஸ் ஒய் ஜெட் பீங் நேச்சுரல் நம்பர்ஸ் ஹியர் எக்ஸ் ஒய் ஜெட் பீங் ஹோல் நம்பர்ஸ் போத் ஆர் சேம் யூ கேன் ரீடிஃபைன் திஸ் எனி விச் வே ஸோ வி கேன் கால் இட் ஒன் எக்ஸ் ஒன் ப்ளஸ் ஒய் டூ ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் பேர் எக்ஸ் ஒய் ஜெட் ஆர் நேச்சுரல் நம்பர்ஸ் அட்லீஸ்ட் ஒன் அட்லீஸ்ட் டூ அட்லீஸ்ட் த்ரீ ஆர் ஒன் ப்ளஸ் எக்ஸ் டூ ப்ளஸ் ஒய் த்ரீ ப்ளஸ் ஜெட் பேர் எக்ஸ் ப்ளஸ் ஒய் எக்ஸ் ஒய் ஜெட் ஆர் ஹோல் நம்பர்ஸ் நம் வீ டாக்கிங் அபவுட் திஸ் இட்ஸ் லைக் ஒன் ஃபைவ் ஒன்ஸ் சம் டூ ஸ்லாட்ஸ் வி நீட் டு புட் அண்ட் புட் அ ப்ளஸ் சிம்பிள் அவுட் ஆஃப் தீஸ் ஃபோர் விச் கேன் பி டன் அண்ட் ஃபோர் சி டூ வேஸ் விச் இஸ் சிக்ஸ் வேஸ் வி கேன் ஈவன் லிஸ்ட் டவுன் அண்ட் ஃபைன் வி ஹேவ் ஏ பி கே கிவ் எம் ஒன் லெட்ஸ் கிவ் பிமல் டூ ஒன் ப்ளஸ் டூ இஸ் த்ரீ வி நீட் டு ஹவ் டோட்டல் ஆஃப் ஃபைவ் அமல் பீயிங் ஒன் this could be 3 this could be 4 amal being 1 this could be 4 this could be 3 we cannot have 1 2 5 1 3 4 1 4 3 these three possibilities exist with amal getting 1 we cannot have 5 for bimal then kamal will have only 2 that's not possible put 2 for amal 2 for bimal 4 for this or 2 3 3 we cannot have 2 4 2 amal having 3 bimal having 2 3 plus 2 5 5 plus 3 8 with 3 that's the only possibility with amal gets 4 then bimal 2 and kamal 3 that's not possible or these are the six possibilities we can list them down and find out or we can be slightly more form like about it both work obviously how many four digit numbers which are divisible by 6 can be formed using the digits 0 2 3 4 6 such that no digit is used in more than once and zero does not occur in the leftmost position we're looking at four digit numbers fine so there are five digits here out of these five one should be left out so you have a multiple of 6 that means it should be a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 3 so it should be an even number that's also a multiple of 3 Now, 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 0. If I added all the digits, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 6 is 15. This is 15. This is a multiple of, this is a multiple of 3. If I add all of this, it will be a multiple of 3. So, if we drop something, then that should also be a multiple of 3. Or, if we drop the multiple of 3, that will work. or we could have the digits as 2 4 6 0 2 3 4 0 or 2 3 4 6 2 4 6 12 that's a multiple of 3 2 3 4 9 that's a multiple of 3 2 3 4 6 this is 15 that's a multiple of 3 and so the digits could be 2 4 6 and 0 2 3 4 and 0 2 3 4 6 all of these are possible right now with these four digits we want to have the number of possible even numbers that are there 2 4 6 0 all four are even numbers and so we can say any four digit number formed with these that should work for the first digit there are three possibilities it cannot obviously be 3 that's ruled out uh, the first digit cannot be 0 so that cannot be one of the possibilities so three possibilities second digit three possibilities third digit two possibilities and one possibility for the last digit 3 into 3 9 9 8 2 18 18 possible numbers with 2 3 4 0 0 find the we need to look at even numbers now there's a complication here we cannot just worry about the total number of numbers because the last digit 
cannot be odd and so since there's only one odd digit let's find out the total and then subtract the combination where there's a last digit right so total possibilities is the first digit cannot be zero so three options for this two three or four whatever this is that should not be in the second digit three two one so three and three two two into one 18 possibilities exist for this of this 18 there will be some combination where the last digit is three and that means two four zero go here but zero cannot go into the first slot so two possibilities here two possibilities here one possibility here four such numbers are possible we're talking about two zero four three four zero two three two four zero three four two zero three subtract these four 14 numbers are possible and so 18 numbers with these digits 14 with these digits 2 3 4 6 now there's no zero constraint so totally there are 24 numbers possible rearranging this of these if you have to have the last digit as 3 2 4 6 get rearranged in three factorial ways out of the four factorial three factorial numbers three factorial different combinations will be odd numbers so 4 factorial minus 3 factorial 24 minus 6 18 numbers work satisfying both our condition that it should be an even number and should be a multiple of of 3 so 18 numbers with these digit combinations 18 plus 18 36 36 plus 14 50 50 numbers are possible all of which are four digit numbers that are divisible by three using the digit 0 2 3 4 6 such that no digit is used more than once or each digit appears exactly once whichever four digits are chosen so 50 numbers are possible totally brilliant 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 question first get isolate the digits that can be possible then count rigorously make sure we account for two conditions the last digit should be even first digit should not be zero the number of solutions x comma y comma z to the equation x minus y minus z equal to 25 x y z are positive integers x is less than or equal to 40 y is less than or equal to 12 z is less than or equal to 12 right. or the maximum values y and z can take are 12 maximum x can take is 40 and right. so let's think about this from 40 we subtract this we subtract something to get 25 from 40 let's i'm just going to put some numbers here 40 minus 12 minus 3 equal to 25 40 minus 15 is 25 x can be 40 y can be 12 and z can be 3 next is 40 this works and when x is 39 i'm going to go step by step x equals 40 that means y plus z equals 15 and x is 39 y plus z equals 14 x is 38 y plus z equals 13 and so on right so x is less than or equal to 40 y less than or equal to 12 z less than or equal to 12 how do we simplify this we can take individual values values for x and then find the number of possibilities for y and z if y plus z equal to 15 y is less than or equal to 12 so y could be 12 z could be 3 and then we have 11 4 so y can take values 12 11 10 9 all the way till 3 and z can take the corresponding other values from 12 to 3 this is a set of 10 values when x is 40 y plus z equal to 15 there are 10 possibilities right y can go up to 12 and z can go up to 12 so y can take all values from 3 to 12 here again y can go to a maximum of 12 and from y can range from 12 all the way till 2 12 to 2 there are 11 values y plus z equal to 13 y can go from 12 to 1 there are 12 values when x is 37 
y plus z is 12 y can go x y z are positive integers 11 to 1 11 values x is 36 y plus z is 11 y can go from 10 to 1 10 values fine so x is 35 y plus z is 10 y can take from 9 downwards 9 values and i'm going to go to the next slide what we have here values the number of values that can be taken if done till x equal to 35 i'm going to go from x equal to 34 33 but the values we have here 10 11 12 11 10 9 10 11 12 11 10 9 x equals 34 y plus z should be equal to 9 y can start from 8 we have 8 values here we'll have 7 values 32 6 values 31 5 values 34 values 29 3 values 28 2 sets 27 1 set when it's 27 we have only one possibility so we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way till 10 12 plus 10 plus 11 or 12 into 13 by 2 plus 21 12 into 13 by 2 6 into 13 78 plus 21 which is 99 this is what they're looking for going step by step plugging in x equal to 40 39 38 all the way till 27 x cannot be less than 27 in how many ways can seven identical erasers be distributed among four kids in such a way that each kid gets at least one eraser but nobody gets more than three erasers so a plus b plus c plus d equal to seven each kid gets at least one like the natural numbers so a plus b plus c plus d equal to 7 dealing with natural numbers nobody gets more than three erasers so let's think about this let's forget this three eraser constraint so we have one two three four five six seven erasers put among four kids so it's like saying i'm putting distributing some plus symbols here if i put three plus symbols somewhere in these slots then i'm good are six slots and I have to select three plus symbols among them six c3 ways of doing this I've forgotten this constraint remember so six c3 ways are there of distributing seven identical erasers among four kids so six c3 is six into five into four by one into two into three which is 20 the 20 ways of doing this we don't keep this constraint now let's think about it let's say nobody gets more than four or three erasers let's say some one kid gets more than three erasers so one kid could get four or five or six or seven let's say four if this kid gets four each of them has to get one because at least one is required only one way this kid can get four nobody can get more than four so the only possibility is four one 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 that could be one four one 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 four one 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 four some one kid could get four erasers it could be any one of the four kids so from 20 subtract 4 we have 16 ways of doing this a b c d e f g h and j k be five diameters of a circle with center o center at o wonderful uh, a b c d e f g h and g k five diameters of a circle with center at o in how many ways can three points be chosen out of a b c d e f g h j k five six seven eight nine ten and o so as to form a triangle and so any three points lying on a circle are non-collinear so there are 11 points here i'm going to break this down we're basically saying from this 11 how can you select three points that are not collinear i'm going to break this as some 10 of these and so some 10 of these out of these 10 you select any three they'll be non-collinear any three points on a circle are not collinear fine wonderful now let's think about o o separately and let's have o here at the center 
then out of the remaining 10 we can select sum 2 that's the way to go about it how take o and then select sum 2 out of the remaining 10 that will take that will happen in 10 c2 ways however if the 10 included a b c d e f g h or j k then we're talking about collinear lines this will not be a triangle this will not be a triangle this will not be a triangle those we'll have to subtract those we'll have to remove so to 10 c3 add 10 c2 and then from this subtract 5 the five selections of a b c d e f g h and j k a o b c o d e f o g o h j o k will not be triangles pretty much anything else will be a triangle so 10 c3 10 into 9 into 8 by 1 into 2 into 3 10 c2 10 into 9 by 2 minus 5 so this is 3 8 into 4 8 by 2 is 4 120 plus 45 minus 5 120 plus 40 160 you could imagine this as 11 c3 11 into 10 into 9 by 1 into 2 into 3 this is 3 this is 5 15 into 11 is 165 minus 5 that's the other way of thinking about it effectively out of the 11 points select any three and then from that subtract the selections of the five diameters so 11 c3 minus 5 or 10 c3 plus 10 c2 minus 5 both ways we get to 116. Each of 74 students in a class studies at least one of the three subjects, H, E, and P. So I straight away know that is a Venn diagram question. And so, H, E, P. So, H, E, P. 74 in a class. All of them study at least one of the three. This is the remaining zero. 10 students study all three subjects. Lovely. I can just put this in here. Well, 20 studied H and E, but not P. That means here. Every student who studies P also studies H or E or both. So every student who studies P should either be here or here or here. There's no standalone P. This goes to zero. The number of students studying H equals that studying E. Then the number of students studying H is wonderful. So. Think about this, if you have A here and B here, C here and D here, A plus B is equal to C plus D. You can add everything up and we can have an A plus B plus C plus D number. And so that is a that is a possibility. A plus B is equal to C plus D. Now right, think about this, A plus B plus C plus D. a plus b plus c plus d plus 30 equals 74 but this part is 0 this is 0 or a plus b plus c plus d is 74 minus 30 which is 44 a plus b is equal to c plus d right? a plus b plus c plus d is 44 this part equal to this part and we are told these two are equal outside is 0 number of people studying H is equal to number of people studying E these are common that means people who miss out A plus B should be equal to C plus D these two are common so people who study H but not E should be equal to people who study E but not H which is why we have this equation or A plus B is 44 by 2 which is 22 the number of students studying H equals that studying E, then the number of students studying H, A plus B is 22. So 22 plus 10, 32 plus 20, 52. 30 here, 22 here, adding up to 52. In this question, we can even eliminate P in the last step. Let's say H and E have a total of 74. H union E is 74. H intersection E is 30. H equal to E and then simplify and solve that. If among 200 students, 105 like pizza and 135 like burger, then the number of students who like only burger can possibly be, can possibly be. So we need to find the minimum number of people who can like only burger. 
134 people like burger I want to find minimum and maximum of those who can like only burger so if you want to go for the minimum then as many of these 134 as possible should like pizza also in other words we should have pizza sitting inside here this difference is 29 so only burger should be 29 or more the number of people who like only burger is 29 or more this number should be so we can eliminate these two there clearly evidently is an upper bound as well right so if we're thinking about the upper bound then we need to have as few people uh, in pizza and burger so we should drag this out out of the 200 totally the pizza and burger overlap should be as small as possible this is 105 this is 134 this number should be as small as possible so outside should be zero let's say this is x so 105 plus 134 minus x should be equal to 200 239 minus x should be 200 x should be 39 only burger would be 134 minus 39 which is 95 it cannot be any more than 95 so this is out is an answer only burger is greater than or equal to 29 and less than or equal to 95. A is 6 power 2n minus 35 n minus 1 n equal to 1 2 3 and b is 35 times n minus 1 n is 1 2 3 and which of the following is true neither every element of a is in b nor every member of b is in a every member of a is in b and at least one member of B is not in A. Every member of B is in A. B is a subset of A. At least one member of A is not in B. Whereas A is not a subset of B. Right? This says A is a subset of B. Before we go further, I want to write down and see a few numbers. I want to put n equal to 1. So 6 square minus 35 minus 1, which is 0. We put n equal to 2. 6 power 4 minus 70 minus 1. n equal to 3. 6 power 6 minus 105 minus 1. There are going to be some numbers. I can already sense that a becomes larger and larger the more we put. Because it goes 6 square, 6 power 4, 6 power 6, 6 power 8. a runs away from us becomes bigger and bigger and b when n equal to 1 b is 35 times n minus 1 35 times 0 b would be b of the first element will be 0 when n is 2 it is 35 into 1 35 when n is 3 35 into 2 70 b is more predictable every multiple of 35 from 0 onwards every positive multiple is there in this set well, this question just opens up because of this neither every member of a is in b nor every member of b is in a every member of b is in a this is wrong 70 is not in a a is galloping away at least one member of a is not in b so all multiples of 35 are sitting here practically including zero all positive multiples all we've got to think now is are we are these numbers multiples of 35 that's all we need to think and they have to be why so think about this a is 6 power 2n minus 35n minus 1 i'm going to write that 6 power 2n minus 1 minus 35n this is 36 power n minus 1 power n minus 35n 36 power n minus 1 power n will be a multiple of 36 minus 1 so every element in a is a multiple of 35 b lists all multiples of 35 including 0 so every element of a is in b and at least one member of b is not in a 70 is not in a 105 not in a a jumps across multiples of 35 
after zero, it goes to a large number, and then a much larger number, and then a giant larger number. B lists every multiple of 35. So B is a superset. A is contained within A. There's A like this and B like this. Every element of A is in B, and at least one member of B is not in A. There are plenty of members in B, not in A. For two sets A and B, A triangle B denotes the number of elements which belong to A or B, but not both. So A B A triangle B is this. A union B. From that we remove A intersection B. Then the number of elements in P triangle Q triangle R triangle S. Let's find P triangle Q. First P triangle Q is this has one two three four. This has two three five six. 2 and 3 are common, remove that. P triangle Q is 1, 4, 5, 6. Let's worry about R triangle S now. R and S have, this has 1, 3, 7, 8, 9. 9 is common. This has 1, 3, 7, 8. This has 2, 4, 10. All even numbers. Only even number here is 8. So, not present here so our triangle s will have one two three four seven eight ten so that's one three seven eight yeah they are sitting there two four ten so one two three four seven eight ten only one common element so from five plus four we remove that one common element twice over we should have seven now this triangle this what is common one is common one goes away from both four is common four goes away five is not common six is not common or we'll have we have to go numerically two three five six seven eight ten one two three four five six seven elements that's what we are looking for in a tournament there are 43 junior level and 51 senior level participants each pair of juniors play one match. Like 43 junior level and 51 senior level. Each pair of seniors play one match. There is no junior versus senior match. The number of girl versus girl matches in junior level is 153. So there are probably boys and girls. And then here boys and girls. Well, the number of boy versus boy matches in senior level is 276. Wonderful. There are n number of girls here, n number of m number of boys here. Let's say n girls here, m boys here. This question is very doable. Girl versus girl matches is 153. N girls, number of matches will be nc2. nc2 is 153. n into n minus 1 by 2 is 153. n into n minus 1. 306 don't factorize this and do something with a with a quadratic equation product of two consecutive numbers is 306 306 is a multiple of of 9 so we have an 18 into a 17 that should work it does so there are 18 girls in this 43 minus 18 is 25 boys fine now let's go here m boy versus boy matches in senior level m c2 is 276 m into m minus 1 by 2 is 276 m into m minus 1 is 276 into 2 552 fine i'm going to write this down on the next page m into m minus 1 is 552 552 is 276 into 2 which is 138 into 4 which is 69 into 8, which is 23 into 24. We've hit pay dot. This is 24 into 23. So the 43 juniors, boys and girls, there are 25 boys and 18 girls. 51 seniors, boys and girls, there are 24 boys and 27 girls. The number of matches a boy plays against a girl is 25 into 18. All these boys have to play all these girls plus 24 into 27, whatever this turns out to be. 
25 into 18 plus 24 into 27. 25 into 18, 18 fives are 90, 0, 9, 36, 45, 450, plus 24 into 27. 24 sevens are 168, 8, 16, 48 plus 16, 64, 648. 450 plus 648, 8, 9, 1098. I'm writing down 1098 as the answer. And very, very doable question. You need to be very comfortable with thinking in terms of NC2 and MC2. And then do the quadratic equation or, or the consecutive numbers multiplying part reasonably quickly and then jump in and plonk the answer. A club has 256 members of whom 144 can play football, 123 can play tennis. I'm already thinking set theory. 132 can play cricket. 58 can play both football and tennis. 25 can play both cricket and tennis. 63 can play both football and cricket. So we've been given A, B, C, A intersection B, B intersection C, C intersection A. If every member can play at least one game, that means A union, B union, C is this. There's nothing outside of this. And what do we know? We know that A union, B union, C is A plus B plus C minus A intersection B minus B intersection C minus C intersection A plus A intersection B intersection C. In this question, the question asks us for how many players who can play only tennis. Right? So the Venn diagram approach is going to come into play. But here we need to be smart. You can say, look, I'm not going to fill every number and solve algebraically. I've been given six of these and this. I will find this. And then I'll go to the diagram. So 256 equals 144 plus 123 plus 132 minus 58 minus 25 minus 63 plus x these three we need to add 3 plus 5 8 plus 8 16 6 1 7 plus 2 9 9 plus 5 14 so minus 146 144 plus 143 plus 132 minus 146 144 minus 146 is minus 2 130 minus 132 minus 2 is 130 so we're going to have 123 plus 130 253 is this computation so 253 plus x is 256 or x is 3 now we can come back to the diagram angle of this let's say we have football here tennis here cricket here we need to focus only on tennis this is 123 this number in between is 3 football and tennis is 58 so this is 55 58 minus 3 cricket and tennis is 25 25 minus 3 is 22 so these three account for 58 plus 22 which is 80 out of 123 80 have been accounted for remaining 43 play tennis only done this is a question from um, set theory interesting one let's try this students in a college have to choose at least two subjects from chemistry math and physics the number of students choosing all three subjects is 18 Choosing math as one of their subjects is 23. Choosing physics as one of their subjects is 25. The smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry as one of their subjects is interesting. Let's draw the diagram. Okay. Maths, physics, chemistry. I like that number 18 that goes here. We have maths here. Number of students taking math is 23. Choosing physics. Is 25. We want to find the smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry. When it is smallest, then these two should be as small as possible. Right? So, could these two be zero? The smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry as one of their subjects. Got to have to choose at least two subjects from chemistry, mathematics, and physics. So these are all zero. And so, if both of these were zero, the entire overlap has to sit here. That's not possible because this is 23, this is 25. The higher this is, the smaller this could be. So as high as possible, 18 goes here, we could put 5 here. 18 plus 5 adds up to 23. 18 plus 5 is 23 out of the 25. So we can put 2 here. This is the best possible scenario to have chemistry as low as possible. And that number will be 20. Remember, this is 18, these 3 are 0. If this has to be as low as possible, this has to be as high as possible. The moment we crack that, we are through. The number of groups are three or more distinct numbers that can be chosen from 
ஒன் டூ த்ரீ ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் சிக்ஸ் செவன் எயிட் ஸோ தட் த குரூப்ஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் இன்க்ளூட் த்ரீ அண்ட் ஃபைவ் வைல் செவன் அண்ட் எயிட் ஆர் நெவர் இன்க்ளூடட் ஸோ தே ஷுட் ஆல்வேஸ் இன்க்ளூட் த்ரீ அண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஷுட் ஹேவ் த்ரீ அண்ட் ஃபைவ் நெவர் ஹேவ் செவன் அண்ட் எயிட் வைல் செவன் அண்ட் எயிட் ஆர் நெவர் இன்க்ளூடட் ஸோ த்ரீ அண்ட் ஃபைவ் ஆர் இன் ஸோ வி கேட் ஒன் டூ ஃபோர் சிக்ஸ் மே ஆர் மே நாட் பி இன் செவன் அண்ட் எயிட் ஆர் நெவர் இன்க்ளூடட் ஸோ வி குட் செலக்ட் பிட்வீன் ஒன் டூ ஃபோர் சிக்ஸ் அவுட் ஆஃப் திஸ் எனி கேட்டகரி குட் பி இன் செவன் அண்ட் எயிட் ஆர் நெவர் இன்க்ளூடட் வில் இட் பி வெரி கேர்ஃபுல் அபவுட் திஸ் வி குட் ஹவ் ஓன்லி ஒன் குட் ஹவ் டூ அவுட் ஆஃப் திஸ் த்ரீ அவுட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஃபோர் அவுட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஈச் ஆஃப் தேம் குட் பி இன் அர் அவுட் இன் அர் அவுட் இன் அர் அவுட் at least one of them should be selected and then we think about uh, how many ways this can be done and so 7 and 8 are never included together is very interesting 7 and 8 are never included together that means i could have 1 2 4 7 i could have 2 4 6 8 i cannot have 4 5 6 7 8 7 alone could be there 8 alone could be there only 7 and 8 together cannot be there we said 7 and 8 are never included then it is easy think about 1 2 4 6 figure out the combinations get done 7 alone can be there 8 alone could be there so what do we do we say hey let's count everything so i'll have 1 2 4 6 7 8 3 3 elements should be there at least 3 3 or more that means already two are there out of this 1 2 3 4 5 6 at least one should be there each of them could be in or out in or out in or out two par six possibilities from this we subtract one the one possibility where nothing is selected so two par six minus one we have 63 subsets possible that are at least three or three elements and three and five are included now within this we'll say we'll remove everything where we have three five seven and eight everything that includes three five seven and eight that means 3 5 7 8 out of 1 2 4 6 any one could be there any two could be there any three could be there all four could be there none could be there all of those possibilities will remove that means out of 1 2 4 6 in, in out in out in out in out all possibilities 2 par 4 possibilities 16 different combinations will remove because all 16 of them will have 3 5 7 8 that's not possible so from this 63 we'll knock off those 16 to give ourselves 47 so 47 subsets will have 3 and 5 will have at least three elements will not have 7 and 8 both together the other way of doing this count everything with 1 2 4 6 count everything with 7 but not 8 and then 8 but not 7 7 but not 8 8 but not 7 everything with 1 2 4 6 in all of this we need to keep in mind that we do not want to count any three elements subset uh, any two elements subset at least three elements need to be there that's the other way of going about which is also possible which also do the number of ways of distributing 15 identical balloons six identical pencils and three identical erasers so 15 balloons six pencils and six erasers among three children obviously not identical children that would be brilliant such that the each child gets at least four balloons and one pencil so four balloons plus one pencil so six identical pencils and three identical erasers sorry about this on erase this so four balloons plus one pencil four balloons plus one pencil each of them definitely gets this and then what are the ways of uh, get at least four balloons and one pencil how do we distribute the, the rest so all well, us think about is four balloons one pencil four balloons one pencil four balloons one pencil have been ac- accounted for the balloons are indistinguishable so to are the pencils so to are the erasers so out of this you can select any four any four any four given it away one 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 given it away so four plus four plus four 12 out of the way 1 plus 1 plus 1 3 out of the way that means after doing this we have three balloons three pencils three erasers 
practically we only have this to give away not not anything else the children are not identical the balloons are identical the pens are identical the erasers are identical right so this again is tricky because i could put one balloon one pencil and two erasers one remaining here nothing there i can even give nothing to the third person it's still tricky I have three balloons, three pencils, three erasers. How do I distribute this? Each one, we cannot say goes into one. Each one does not have three choices because the balloons are identical. That becomes an issue. So what do I do? I think about only three balloons. Child one, child two, child three. And now I say, hey, I could have a scenario where all three go to one child. This is three, zero, zero. So this 300 could be 300, 030, 003. Two of the children get nothing. That means one gets all three. 300 is one possibility. Now, only one child gets nothing. The other two get something. Out of the three, other two get something. So it will be one and two. One here, two here, no other possibility. So this could be 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, etc, etc, etc. That's one possibility. Now the third combination, everybody gets something, nobody gets 0. That means it's got to be 1, 1, 1. One balloon, one balloon, one balloon can be done in only one way. One balloon, two balloons, zero balloons can be done in six ways. Why? It could be 1, 2, 0, 1, 0, 2. 2, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0. 0, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. 1, 0, 2 being rearranged. 3, 0, 0 can be done in three ways. 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3. Now we found out the number of ways in which we can distribute the three balloons. That can be done in 10 ways. We still haven't touched our erasers and our pencils. But hey, that becomes simpler. Because we put three pencils. That can be done in the same 10 ways. Three erasers, same 10 ways. 10 ways of distributing balloons, 10 ways of distributing pencils, 10 ways of distributing erasers, 10 into 10 into 10, 1000 totally. That's the answer we're looking for. The number of integers greater than 2000 that can be formed with the digit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, using each digit at most once, at most once. That means no, no, no repetition. So maximum we can form 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 digit numbers. Using these six digits, we want to find all integers greater than 2000. 2000 is a four digit number. We are basically counting all five digit numbers, all six digit numbers, and then some four digit numbers. We want to think about five digits. Then we'll think about six digits. Then we'll move on to four digits. One, two, three, four, five. This, this digit can be one, two, three, four, five. This cannot be zero. The starting digit cannot be zero. Okay. Let's say this is a. This one, it can be zero, but it cannot be a. Why? Because each digit is used at most once. It cannot repeat. Call this b. This digit zero to five, except a and b. Or there are five options for this. Out of 6, we subtract A, 5 options for this. Out of 6, we subtract A and B, 4 options for this. Here, what will we do? We'll say 0 to 5, minus of A, B and C. Out of 6 options, we subtract 3. 5 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2. Not many 5 digit numbers are possible. Let's move to 6 digit numbers. A, B, C, D, E, F. Nice. A has again five options. One, two, three, four, five. B would be zero to five minus A. Five options. Zero to five minus A and B. Four options. Three options. Two options. One option. It will be five into five into four into three into two into one. This is 5 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2. Both are same. There's an additional one there. That's it. 5 into 5, 25. 25 into 4, 100. 100 into 6, 600. 5 into 5, 25 into 400 into 6, 600. 
605 digit numbers, 606 digit numbers. Now let's move to four digit numbers. Looking at four digit numbers, more than 2000. The first digit cannot be one. It can only be two, three, four, five. Very interestingly, if the first digit were two, all possible numbers are more than 2000. So you have to worry about first digit being two and not counting a few numbers. All numbers with first digit 2 will count. So A, there are 4 options. B, 0 to 5, except A, 5 options. 4 options here, 5 options here. C, the 0 to 5 minus A, comma B, 3 options here. 4 into 5 into 4 into 3, 4 into 5, 20, 20 into 4, 80, 80 into 3, 240. So we had five digit numbers and six digit numbers, 600 and 600 each. Four digit number, 240, 1200, 1400, 1440. Hopefully that's there in our choices. Yes, it is. That may take me of all distinct numbers that can be obtained by rearranging the digits in 1421, including itself. It's a nice question. 1421, how many rearrangements do we have? Four factorial by two, 12 rearrangements. Starting with one, there are six rearrangements. Starting with four, the six, three, and three. So if I add up all the unit digit, I'll have one appearing, same pattern will repeat six times, four appearing three times, two appearing three times. So sum of all unit digit, six plus 12 plus six, which is 1824. Nice, brilliant. An arithmetic mean is what we need to find. So sum of all unit digit is 12 or sum of all the numbers is 24 in the, in the units place, 24 in the tens place, 24 in the twelfth place and 24 in the thousand, sorry, units place, tens place, hundredth place, thousandth place. So sum of all of this is going to be 24 into 1111. Average of all those numbers is this divided by 12. Why the 12 numbers? Sum of all of them is 24 into 1111. Average is stack divided by 12. How do I get 24? Sum of all units place is 12, that is 24. Sum of all tens place, hundred place, thousand place will also be 12. It's symmetric. So sum of all the numbers is 24 ones plus 24 tens plus 24 hundred plus 24 thousands. 24 into 1111. That is the total of all the numbers divided by 12. That is the average, which is this number. 11111 one, 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 one into 2. The number of all natural numbers up to 1000 with non repeating digits. All natural numbers up to 1000 with non-repeating digits and so up to 1000 so we have a number like um, 236 we'll count it we have a number like 668 we won't count it and so 236 we'll count it 668 we won't count it so to do this we have three digit numbers and two digit numbers and single digit numbers i'm going to say all numbers from 1 to 0 to 999. Natural numbers 1 to 1000. I'm going to think of it as 0 to 999. 0 and 1000. 1000 we won't count anyway. 0 to 999 we are counting. 0 will ignore. 999 doesn't count. Instead of 1 to 1000, we're doing 0 to 999. Nice. So A, B, C, non repeating digits. Nice. So A could take values from 0 to 9. B will be 0 to 9 except a c will be 0 to 9 except a comma b so this will be 10 possibilities 9 possibilities 8 possibilities 10 into 9 into 8 720 720 different numbers are possible remember this could be 0 and if i have a number like 078 that will get counted if i have a number like 016 that will get counted, it will get counted here. I am not thinking in terms of 3 digit, 2 digit and single digit. I am counting in terms of all numbers from 0 to 999. 1000 anyway won't get counted. So it doesn't matter. So now I am saying, hey, all of these get counted. But there is no 720 in the choice. I am in trouble. Why is 720 not in the choices? I look at this and go, why has 720 not been included here? 10 into 9 into 8. And so, now, if A were 0, 
and B were 1, C were 6, that will get counted. 0 to 9 except A, 0 to 9 except A and B. All three digits should be distinct, non-repeating digits, nothing should repeat. So 0 to 9, 0 to 9 except A, 0 to 9 except B, A and B. And so three digits being distinct, we are counting all of them, all possibilities. Now, is there something that we are missing out here that we should actually be counting? And so, so if you think about single digit numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they get missed out. Why do they get missed out? Because there will be 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 5, 0, 0, 6, all of that. And I should be counting that. And I end up not counting that. So I should count those. So these two both being 0, I should count them. So now I realize, okay, this is all interesting, but because I've introduced the 0, it's complicated. This is in the marks in the bag. So I'm going to get this down. I'm going to say A, B, C, numbers the form A, B, numbers the form A. Nine numbers of this type, put it in the bag. This is 0 to 9, 1 to 9 except A, 1 to 9 except A comma B. So this is, sorry, 1 to 9, 0 to 9 except A, 0 to 9 except A comma B. 1 to 9 has 9 possibilities, 9 possibilities, 8 possibilities, 9 to 9 into 8, 81 into 8, 648. This is 1 to 9, this is 0 to 9 except A, 9 into 9, 81 possibilities, plus 9, we're looking at 648 plus 81 plus 9, 10, 18, 8, 1, 5 plus 8, 13, 3, 1, 7, 38, 10. Initially, I tried to do it by this method. And then I got confused. I got worried because there are some numbers where there are 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 2. I should count them. So I'm worried about this. So I'm like, I might end up missing something. I don't want to do this. I know that three digit, two digit, one digit number works. Let me fall back into that method. So three digit A, B, C, 1 to 9, 0 to 9, except A, 0 to 9, except A, comma B. 1 to 9, 0 to 9, except A. Nine numbers here. 648 plus 81 plus 9, I'm through. Done. Very happy. Hush. Yeah.